Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for episode 16 of the Pacific Northwest. You might be wondering while I'm staring at a great big pile of manure. Well, I'll tell you. My first attempt to record this episode ended up a dramatic failure. Pretty much the equivalent of this great big pile of manure. And I lost a lot of footage. It's gone. Never to be found again. You will see we're at $940,000. And that entire episode was getting us there. So, I'm going to fill you in the unfortunate way. We started off with showing off the truck that we never got to see. Um, <clears throat> and we loaded up 60000 liters of milk and we sold that milk for hundred and forty four thousand dollars so that really bumped us up we had big fertilizer contracts that uh, really bumped us up on fields 35 and 33 the two big fields down in the valley we did those each two times and that brought in about hundred and thirty thousand dollars and if you've been paying attention you will notice right here now that this looks remarkably bare, doesn't it? Yes, episode 16 was going to be the great tree harvest. The trees that we planted back in episode 2 or 3, I can't remember which one. It was all about harvesting these trees. And unfortunately, they are gone. And so is the footage. But those brought in $400,000. We harvested 40 trees, the same 40 that we planted, and they were worth $10,000 per tree. So that puts us up to a whopping $940,000. And my goodness, doesn't it look bare without them standing here? I, I didn't realize uh, <laughs> how much I liked them. I guess I knew, but, you know. And the frustration of losing all of that. Mm. So, anyway, can't change the past. We can only move on from the future. That's the situation as it is. And we are going to be harvesting today. Today is going to be harvesting all of our fields. We have five now, five fields, not counting the grass. We are going to start with the grass, and we're going to do a fast hay harvest. Going to be the quickest hay harvest I've ever done and you'll see why here in just a little bit but all of our fields are planted with canola the canola is ripe we're just waiting for it to roll over even the corn field that I harvested and turned into silage I'd done that two or three times in a row and uh, felt like that that field needed a bit of a break so I planted that with canola so we've got 10 20 the field we'll call 20 Annex or 20A, the field that we created. And then our new field, our new field, our new field, field 21, um, is all planted with canola too. I guess that's four fields plus our grass field makes five. So we have a lot of money. And this is Farming Simulator. So guess what that means? That means we get to go spend money and I will see you at the store. Now, I brought this tractor and our header trailer down earlier today because we're harvesting so many fields and because Mod Hub provided something else for us today we're going to be picking up a new harvester so we have a second one working for us but the first thing I want to focus on is getting the hay off of uh, off of our field and I have a plan to make this go quickly keep your fingers crossed my plans have not <laughs> gone well today so hopefully this one will go a little bit better so a new windrow rower showed up recently and it's this agronic 
Now what makes this interesting is that it's a front windrower. Now it's a little bit narrow at only 5.1 meters, but it will go on the front of a tractor. That's important because that means we can use some other implement on the back, obviously. There's that word again, obviously. Somebody, somebody make an obviously counter. Keep me on track. Anyway, it's only 14 grand. I'm going to give it a shot. I hope this will help speed up our hay harvesting. And we will buy that. Now, to go with that, I would like a loading wagon. Again, we've had some loading wagons come out recently. Now, these tend to be expensive. That's why we were using the milling machine. But we can't use the milling machine and something else with it necessarily. At least we can't get a windrow. It, it's, this is still going to reduce our passes on the field by one, and that's kind of the goal. So this new Stroutman Terra Vitesse CFS 5201DO 50,000 liters. That's a really nice sized loading wagon and we are going to buy that. What tires look best? I like I still like the Trelleborg. So we're going to go with Trelleborgs. That's 131,000. No problem. We have real money for a change. Now, since I'm down here and I don't necessarily need it right now, but I'm at the store, I might as well buy it. We have a brand Spanking new John Deere STS 9750 harvester available to us. It's an older model, but it looks good. It holds 10,570 liters, a little bit more or about the same as our current harvester. And it's got some different design options. This, this cover is funky. I mean, it's interesting. I just have gotten so used to open top harvesters that I just, I, I can't get my head around that. But I do kind of like the, uh, the crown or bulk carrier as they're calling it. So we are going to go ahead and put that on. Now, as far as the model numbers go, 2003 or 2006. Which one do we like better? I kind of like the 2003, so we're going to go with that. Now, wheel setup wise, we have some options, and that's a little funky, but interesting. Wide transport, wide transport 2, wides all the way around, a second version of wides apparently and doubles on the front and a second version of doubles on the front. What's Is there a difference? Not much of a difference and then we're back to where we were before. I think just for something different I'm gonna go with the doubles on the front and I guess I'll go with the second version. So that's going to run us 139400 That is a great price for a harvester. You guys know that as well as I do. You just don't get them that cheap. So we are going to go ahead and buy that. And of course we're going to need a header for it. So let's grab the header. Headers. And this is going to be... Nope. This one. The 630F. Yep. That's a pretty uh, pretty much a John Deere header, so no options there. 9.7 meters wide. Not quite as wide as our uh, original, but that's what we're going with for now. That's, what, about 300,000 down? No complaints from me. No complaints at all. But for now, we're going to get up to the farm and get started on our grass harvest. And keep your fingers crossed that that goes incredibly quick.
That's my plan. It should be quick. The only thing that could slow us down is the amount of hay that this uh, this new trailer will hold. Or if our wind rower is just not quite wide enough to do the job. We're going to find out, though. So you all have seen the drive up and down this hill so many times. You're probably as sick of it as I am. I'm not going to make you sit through it again, so I will see you back up at the farm. Okay, just getting set up here for our grass. As you can see, I've got the mowers and the tether all set up on the fence here. Fire up the tether, fire up the mowers. Those are ready to drop down. And now with our case, I'm going to pull that just right up here. And we are going to turn on the forge wagon. And we are going to turn on the wind rower. Drop that down. Drop the pickup on the wagon. And we are going to tell him to follow us. Drop my equipment down and we're going to start mowing. Or maybe. <laughs> oh, I see what's happening. Okay, there we go. So if this works properly, and I don't see why it wouldn't, we're going to mow and he's going to follow us. Windrow that. And unfortunately, it looks like that wind rower is a little narrow, so we probably will have to do some cleanup at the end. But, still, even if we didn't, even if we didn't, we, the grass will still grow back, even if there's some left on the field. So, I think this is working a, about as well as can be expected. I wish that, that, uh, wind rower was a little wider but as it stands right now I kinda like the job that it's doing all I have to do is keep an eye on on the helper behind us to find out exactly when that wagon gets full then I'll have to break off and go empty it bring him back set him up to follow again and then do just a little bit of cleanup when it's all done. So this is going to be a really quick hay harvest, and I am going to time-lapse this so you can watch it in fast forward with music that's very peaceful and calming. Okay, maybe not peaceful and calming, but there will be music, and we'll be going real fast, so see you in a little bit.
Well, I think that turned out pretty well, don't you? Didn't quite work out as planned. The uh, front wind rower just isn't wide enough, and I'm sure some of you at this point are going, well, duh, you had like eight and a half meter wide mowers that uh, obviously the wind rower wasn't quite wide enough. Well, you're right, but those mowers also create windrows, so once the grass is tetted, it's not quite as wide as it would be without mowers that uh, create their own windrows. So I thought that just maybe this little doohickey on the front would work out. It doesn't, but again, this is Farming Simulator where there's always a solution. When in doubt, add more tractor. And that's exactly what we did, as you saw. Instead of just two, we just used all three. And if I have my way, by the end of the day, we'll have a fourth one. Really interested to see the fourth tractor that gets added to our arsenal. And I'm thinking about picking up one more, too. Could have five. We'll have to see how, uh, how things play out with regard to that. I'm just going to clean up some of this scrap that didn't quite get done the first first pass I'm not going to get it all just little bits here and there but yeah follow me as my new best friend <laughs> and a whole bunch of you are saying duh it's only been out forever why haven't you been using it well that's a good question And the only answer I have for it is, I don't know. Because I never took the time to learn it. And that's the truth of it. I wonder how many people are not using mods that would really help them out just because they haven't taken the time to learn them or they seem too complicated or whatever. And sometimes they are. I mean, sometimes there are mods that overcomplicate things. Things that are relatively simple the mod sounds like a good idea in theory, but then when you get down to it, not so much. Okay, well I am just going to park this over here for now. Because as you can see, while we were harvesting hay, our fields came in. We are ready to do the great canola harvest. And we are going to do more than one field at a time. Leave you there. Get you shut down and put away. This is the only... <laughs> and I wouldn't even... I was going to say this is the only drawback. What drawback? Um, what the drawback of having to put away multiple tractors that just saves you 45 minutes of work by not having to take multiple passes on the same field. Yeah, that's no drawback. That's a bonus. Bonus! Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get our first harvester. We'll call that Harvester 1. I'm going to get that into our biggest field and have it start harvesting. Harvester 1 is harvesting. And then I'm going to go down and get our new harvester, bring that up, and get it started over here on field 10. 
So Harvester 2 will be in 10. Harvester 1 will be in 20. Well, I forgot to get our harvester running up there in field um, <laughs> field 20. And I'm going to need to grab a tractor to move this horse out of the way because I can't get through. Now, I can tell you, in a future episode, not too, uh, too far from now, maybe the next episode, maybe the one after that, it's going to be one of the two. We are going to do a barnyard makeover. Because I want some passive income to start coming in, and now that we've got this extra land over here, we've got a little bit that we can work with, and we still have a lot of Field 22 here left that I can work with. We are going to open a farm shop. We're going to get apple trees. We're going to get greenhouses. We're going to get things that will make us money just by sitting there. And all we have to do is add fertilizer and water. And we're going to open up this whole area. We're going to replace the bale barn that we don't need anymore. I'm going to get rid of these two uh, things and replace them with some other something else to provide us with seed and fertilizer. In fact you'll see by the end of today that our fertilizer options are going to change pretty dramatically anyway. Because we're making our own fertilizer now. Why do we buy fertilizer when we've got tens of thousands of liters of it sitting right here on the farm. We don't. That's why. <laughs> we're not going to do that anymore. I mean, we will probably for contracts. I don't think we're making enough to to pick up contracts or anything like that. But Oh, I had not unfolded. Okay, that's what we were waiting on. And let me grab our other John Deere. We are in danger of becoming a John Deere farm. And some of you are cheering, and some of you are booing. I'll remind you that we still have the case, and we still have as many Fent tractors as we do anything else, so Fent will always be my favorite. But, if we can afford it, we are going to pick up one seriously awesome looking tractor today. And it's neither Fent nor John Deere. In fact, it's another new item that came out on Mod Hub recently. It is going to look fabulous. Alright, helper. Get on it. I'm going to go set up um, an unloading wagon, hop back and forth between these two fields. We're going to get all of our canola in, and in fact, let's check that price right quick. Canola, oh, it has, has dropped dramatically. We might not be selling that today. The price has gone down so much. I'd like it to be over 2000 and we're not there. When I planted... A um, great demand had just started. Like literally just showed up. And uh, I thought we could, could get this harvested in time to meet the great demand. But such is not going to be the case. Or deer in this case. So, yeah, we got four more fields to harvest. Shouldn't take that long, actually. We've got a couple good-sized harvesters. And at some point, I've got a whole new pit full of silage over there that needs to uh, go down to the biogas plant. So I will be hauling that off camera. That is a 
bit of a tedious job. And I'm sure it's nothing that looks terribly good on camera, so... Well, I know it's not. It's just running back and forth repeatedly, but it does bring in good money, and we want the money. But our farm's really starting to grow up. We're going to have a lot of good equipment by the end of today. You'll see what I mean. We're going to be purchasing a little bit more stuff before we wrap up. And I'm so happy that we filled in this this ditch here that I can get right over here without having to go all the way around. All right, so let me do another another little bit of uh, time lapse for you, and we'll see you on the other side. There it is, the last of the canola coming off the fields. Four fields of canola. And not too shabby. Now the new John Deere, it worked out pretty well. Um, I'll tell you, it doesn't take much for it to uh, take a beating. I'm going to check it against... I used to have a help before. Yeah, so you can see both of these uh, both of these harvesters did about the same amount of work, if I'm honest. This John Deere has barely taken anywhere, whereas the new John Deere, well, it's pretty beat up. It's it's at half, 50%. So 
maintenance on the new John Deere, even though it was cheap, and I guess you do get what you pay for, maintenance on the new John Deere harvester is probably going to be expensive, and we're going to check that out right now. Like I said, I mean, it did a good job, and one nice thing about it that I really do like is that it empties into a trailer quickly. There's no beating around the bush with this harvester. It's got a nice big pipe, and it knows how to use it. But let's just see what's going to cost us to repair this every time we harvest our fields. Five hundred bucks for one harvest. I don't know. We'll keep it for now and if it's still as difficult later on then we might have to think about replacing it with something a little more uh, versatile. Then again 500 bucks against you know a thousand liters of canola is two thousand dollars five hundred fifteen hundred and we have uh, probably eighty or ninety thousand liters so meh I guess I'm uh, I guess I'm just kinda pinching pennies which really isn't necessary anymore. We are actually making our own money now. I'm still picking up a contract here and there, usually the big fertilizing contracts, just because, I mean, how can you turn your nose up at $60,000? That's a lot of cash. <clears throat> and it's easy money. I mean, I drive a tractor down to a field and then tell a helper to go do the, the work, and I collect. That's what you call being a farm manager. <laughs> hire somebody to do the job for pennies on the dollar and rake in the big bucks isn't that how the wealthy stay wealthy and I'm going to get the canola into our silo just to see exactly how much we ended up with just pull this over here for now and we have one more major purchase and I think we're gonna call it a day and I need to return this uh, wind drawer that's not gonna quite work out for us but it wasn't a good test it was good to to see that I always like to try new equipment, see exactly what it's going to do to and for us. This time we lost. Not that it's a bad piece of equipment, it actually works exceptionally well. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. Um, just for our needs, it's too small. And I don't imagine having a job where a small wind rower like that is going to be beneficial to us. Alright, a final check here. Canola, there it is. Well, even better than I thought. A hundred and thirteen thousand two hundred and one and look at that agri wholesales price is coming up we're going to be able to sell this probably at the beginning of the next episode i'm going to wait for that price to top out and then we're going to sell 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 but at the moment what i really want to do is go shopping one last time and we are going to look at another large tractor now, these just came out on Mod Hub a few days ago also. Is that the one, or is it farther back? Let's see here. I'm kind of excited about this one. Uh, 
What's it? I think this was it. I'm. Um, yep, that's the one. The AFS Connect Magnum. Now I can tell you right now, even though it's a case, we are going black on black. Oh yeah. And we are going to spend the extra money on the Midas flotation tires because those just look wicked. No front fenders. And actually, you know what? We're just going to go red and black. How about that? I like it. No, let's see. We want top of the line engine going to give us 451 horsepower and I want the weights on there the floaters with weights and front attachments I uh, don't need a weight rack yeah give me the give me the front attacher absolutely um, the flashers no, that's not what I want. Flashers. Flashers. There we go. Nope, no flashers. Perfect. We want some extra lights on there, you betcha. And we're going to get GPS. Our first vehicle with GPS. So that's going to be $411. I don't care. I want it. Worked hard for the money. Buying it. Boom. That's ours, but we're not done yet. No, because we have cows now. And you know what cows mean? Cows mean slurry. And we are going to start saving money on fertilizer, at least for our own fields. And I was looking at these earlier, and Horsche is my brand. Horsche, Horsche does what I like. 21,000 liter tank, $55,000 only requires 210 horsepower to pull it. That means the little case can pull it. We are going to buy that. Yes, we are. And we need something to spread our slurry with. And we are going with the 36 meter drag hose. Absolutely. You get what you pay for. And I will see you at the store picking up our new stuff. There she is, our beautiful new case. Look at that thing. Listen to that thing. That is awesome. Let's take a look around. Really nice detail. Outstanding. And I'm not going to make our brand new tractor spread slurry first, but since it's here and we can, it only makes sense to. Uh, use it to get our new gear back up to the farm, right? Of course. Look at that. And that horse is a, is a beautiful thing. We're going to spread this out and see exactly what it looks like. We know what booms look like, but yeah, that's pretty slick. I like it. Really going to be interested to try that out, and we're going to do that first thing next episode, absolutely. But for now, I do appreciate you coming along for the ride. It's been a rough day, <laughs> losing all that footage. Very frustrating. But... I hope we made up for it a little bit. We got all of our harvesting done. We got some quick hay done with uh, Follow Me. And 
we had almost a million dollars to spend and spend it we did. We are now the proud owners of a gorgeous new case tractor and a slurry spreader that our cows are going to keep making money for us. Going to help us keep making money. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, do me a favor, be a pal, be a buddy, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And again, I appreciate you coming along for the ride. And until next time, you all take care.